All right, everyone, welcome to Leading with Leverage, where we look to uncover the secrets of successful pairings of rainmakers and integrators, how they found each other, what worked, what didn't, how they make magic together. Today, really happy to, to bring to you uh, a couple of all-stars from KW Philly. We have Ian Perler here um, and his uh, operations guru, Ed Lanigan. Um, Ian, can you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Ian Perler. Uh, as Ryan said, I'm with KW Philly. Uh, we actually came over to KW uh, in the middle of last year. Uh, it's been a really great thing. And part of that process was finding an awesome person. And uh, that's how I got linked up with Ryan and Ed. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here today. Awesome. Yeah, and, um, and, and Ed, if you could uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. You actually uh, came, came with a little bit of a background in real estate. I did, yes. So uh, I'm Ed. Uh, I've been with Ian uh, six months this this week, and uh, yeah, I have a, a pretty strong uh, production background. I've owned a few small businesses, and I've had my New York uh, real estate license for the past sixteen years, where I kind of always did that on the side, you know, just in the background. Right. You you weren't a full time producing agent, but 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 you were. You, you were in production to some degree when you were in New York, you, you had other roles as well. And then you moved to Correct. Philly. Yes. Gotcha. Thanks. And, uh, and Ian, so is it Ed, he's your first assistant, right? He is my first and only. <laughs> we don't need any more after, after we, we don't need any more. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and you mentioned that you, you did hire us to help you find Ed. Can you tell us a little bit about the decision-making process there, you know, in terms of, Am I going to do this myself? Do, do I want to try to see if I can get some help with this? <clears throat> yeah, um, I took the uh, I took advice is what I did. I, I asked our team leader, Jeremy, I said, I really need someone to help me, you know, as I'm growing the team, I really need someone to help me do that. Um, and I really want to hire someone uh, to do that. And, you know, I was like, I don't know where to start. And he basically said, don't do it yourself. <laughs> have someone do it that knows what they're doing so that they can find the right fit so that you're not hiring someone and making the mistake of having to train them and hire another person and train them because you're not making the right hire. So I leaned on his expertise and advice and that's how I found you guys. Well, yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy Bowers, he's, he's great there. And um, yeah, I mean, some people are, are able to do it at a high level on their own, but um, it, it's a big decision to hire someone and it, it can be very costly if if the hire if the hire goes wrong or, or goes sideways. Um, I, I'd like to go back to kind of like the initial stages of uh, of interviews. So obviously we had we had a bunch of quality candidates. Interesting thing here was Ed actually wasn't the front runner right out of the gate. I mean he pulled he sh he came on very strong at the end and and ran away with the job. But again he wasn't he wasn't the front runner at the beginning. Can let's can you uh, can you talk a little bit about that and a little bit of insight there? Yeah, so I think the process itself was really cool. Um, just kind of seeing everyone's different uh, interviews and, and being able to watch them and, and kind of really, I took the time to watch them a couple times so like really see how everyone was. Um, I think Ed's strong suit uh, is his attention to detail and he, in video calls, and, I, and I'm probably the same way because I know when I make videos, I look like, I get tense because I don't like to be on video. Um, I think it was a little hard to do like an interview in a video setting. And I think it showed on the first interview, but his background was very strong. Um, so then when we did that second interview and we really got to know him, he definitely like opened up more. Um, and we learned a lot more about him, both professionally and personally, which I think is part of the reason why he's here today, six months later, and now working with him. Um, after going through that process. And so I'm happy that we took the time, you know, to do that. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely know that a lot of my clients or even just people that I talk to, you know, when, when you're, when they're making that hire, it's such a big deal that, you know, they want to kind of just have that initial moment where it's like, oh, that's the person, like, I, I just know that's the one right there. And, and, and it's just going to all be perfect like that. It doesn't always work like that, you know, um, and, and definitely with the interviewing and, and there's a whole lot of virtual stuff going on right now. Ed was maybe I'll say a little bit more reserved or a little bit um, 
uptight. I don't know if that's the right word. Ed. How, how, how would you describe kind of your feelings during those initial Zoom interviews versus how it kind of progressed um, throughout the process? Yeah, I would probably say more reserved. Um, I wouldn't use uptight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I'm better face to face. And um, honestly, I guess with you was the first time I've ever even had a Zoom interview. I know we were, you know, not long into the, you know, pandemic. And uh, so that was kind of where everything was going to uh, video and virtual. So you were yeah, my first sure. I, virtual uh, interview. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I like, I like reserve better, better than better than uptight. And you know, to, to your point, this was your first Zoom interview, you know, much of the world, we're just kind of getting used to this. It's something that we, we, it's a tool we've used a lot, but a lot of times we are interviewing people and it's their first, their first interview. Um, and even with in-persons, sometimes when you get someone in person and in the beginning, they, they don't warm up, you know, as much right there in the beginning. So, you know, going back to, to Ian, you know, I, we, we saw a lot in you, Ed, and, and we were like, okay, you know, I, I think he might be, he might be a little reserved. He might be a little bit nervous. This might've been a new experience for him. Let's, let's move him forward um, so we can get to learn more about him because the things in your experience, the things in your background, you know, you did a good job selling yourself. We took a look at your track record. We could see that you had done a lot of stuff that was very similar detail wise, operations wise. Um, so, uh, so even though we, even though it wasn't, you know, necessarily love at first sight, we saw a lot there and, and, and wanted to learn more about you. And, and it was great to see you kind of get more comfortable, open up and make the decision so much easier um, at the end. I feel like I didn't have that with any of the other people either. I felt like, and I had that conversation with you. I remember saying like, they're all good, but like, I didn't get that feeling. And mm -hmm. like, do you like, I mean, I, bought houses and haven't gotten that feeling either too right so it just makes you realize like sometimes you have to like process and think about it more yeah yeah that, it's it's a great point and, and to be fair sometimes it is obvious right there in the beginning right. and, and I understand from the client's perspective you know you're nervous like and, and you would love to just have it be easy right you would love to just have it be up oh, yep without a doubt that's the one um, but it doesn't always work that way um, and, and another interesting thing, as we move through the process, sometimes that person that, that, that blew you away initially, they can get passed by an ed, you know, that, that maybe was a little bit more reserved in the beginning, but as you learn more and they open up a little bit more, you know, it, you know, the, the positions can reverse and, and you wind up going with someone else. So, so Ed, we, we talked a little bit about, uh, about you being more reserved in the beginning, but you were obviously interested in, in working with Ian. Can you talk a little bit about what it was about Ian, it made you feel like, yep, that's, that's the guy I want to work with. <laughs> well, um, I want to say, I mean, he seemed like a super genuine, nice guy, you know, right from the beginning. Um, and by the way, that was all like verified after, you know, I went through his list of a thousand contacts and had to start calling people. And, you know, all these people just couldn't say enough nice things about him. They're like, wow, you're so lucky to, you know, work with him or, you know, what a great guy he is. I mean, I just, you know, so that kind of reconfirmed, you know, what a great person Ian is and what a great decision it ended up being. <clears throat> yeah, and and Ed's, Ed's not just being nice to, to the guy that he works with here. I, I've had a chance to work with these guys and, and Ian is Ian is every, every bit the, the great guy. But again, to point out something that's shown up in every every interview that I've done so far, the assistant has 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 gotten a, a great feeling about genuineness, authenticity, you know, and, and and that's been one of the things that that sold them that sold them right there. So for the rainmakers, you know, um, I, I'd encourage you to maybe not put up a a big front, you know, a a, a a big wall, you know, kind of blocking blocking yourself. Um, you know, talented people, they want there to be a human connection there um, as well. All right, so so let's move on and talk a little bit about uh, what happened after after you got in the door there. Uh, Ed really impressed Ian right away um, once he actually got the job. Ian, can you talk a little bit um, about the things that Ed did very early on that really impressed you and made you feel like, yep, we got the right one. 
we're going to be able to build this business together. Um, yeah, so like I've used to said, once we got to know each other, we went through all those interviews and we kind of like made the decision to move forward. Um, I think the things that stood out that made me feel like it was a really, that he was the right person for the job at that point um, was the way he, like attention to detail. Um, like I try to be pretty detail oriented, but I think Ed's at a, a much superior level than me at that. Um, I think the other thing that I noticed was like right away, I felt like I would ask Ed or say like, hey, we need to do X, Y, and Z. And then like relatively quickly, much quicker than I would have been able to figure it out and make the phone calls do that. He would have some kind of like, well, here are a couple different ways we can do that. Um, for example, we did like a postcard mailing, which I've never done um, and haven't really had a lot of success at. And he was able to like research a whole bunch of companies, give me prices, get me quotes, timelines on when they would be delivered and how to do it and everything like within a couple of days, which I would have never been able to do, you know? So. Yeah, so, so, so Ed was really able to take your vision and, and take the ball and, and run with it, you know, to, yeah. to kind of use a, a, a football comparison right there. That everything I in this melon, he just ran with it. All those crazy ideas we have as real things. Yeah, and, and, and to, the, to the job seekers out there and the people that are looking to make a big splash when they get in the door, that's, that's something that we really try to preach to them. It's like, look, don't, don't just, you know, don't just kind of sit back and, and, and wait, you know, grab the bull by the horns, get in there, do everything you can to, to, to figure it out. Um, when I was early in my career, um, one of my supervisors had me read the story about getting the message to General Garcia, and I'm not going to get into that now, but it, it talks a little bit about, you know, being given a mission and, and just figuring it out. You know, and, and, and at some point, obviously, Ed needs to be able to raise his hand and be like, hey, I need a little bit more direction here. And he's done that. But for the most part, if he can figure it out, he would go do it. And he would go do it quickly. Um, Ed, can you talk a little bit about, because not everyone does that, right? So, so talk, if you would, a little bit about your approach. How are you keeping yourself organized? How are you able to kind of almost stay ahead of Ian's expectations in terms of taking the ball and running with it and, and bringing him solutions and such? Uh, well, I mean, I like to think I'm pretty production oriented. So I kind of like that feeling of accomplishment of getting uh, things done. And, you know, with Ian's help, we created like spreadsheets and to-do lists and calendar invites to keep us um, organized and on task. So I think that really helped a lot. Gotcha. And, and, and that was one thing that, that Ian, Ian mentioned, uh, obviously it's, you know, it, it's the Ian Perler group, you know, Ian's, Ian's the, the rainmaker and, and the boss here, but sometimes Ed has to hold, he has to hold Ian accountable. He has to kind of rattle his cage and be like, Hey, you need to go do this. Um, can, can you guys talk, talk a little bit about how, you know, Ed is able to keep Ian on track. I, can, I mean, so definitely as like an accountability partner, um, I will say it's, it's very, um, for example, coming up this week, like I've always wanted to do St. Patty's Day cards for my clients. I'm always like struggling to do them, struggling to do them. And I told Ed, like, we're going to do it this year. And he was like, all right, I got the cards. All right, I got this. All right, <laughs> like basically had everything ready done. He was like, all right, now we need the list of people. So like, then I had to actually like get the list of people because I committed to doing it. Um, so like things like that were that were always on my mind and always wanted to be done. It's nice to have someone who's now like doing the the pieces that you know that he can do to get me to the point where we can get that executed in a timely frame. And like Ed already has it ready to go and be mailed, uh, even though we're not dropping it off till Monday. He's like ready to go. They're ready to go. So it's it's awesome to have that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, I see a lot of parallels, not just not just in business, but also like personal relationships. I think a, a great relationship is one where kind of both both parties are pushing each other, helping push the whole thing forward. And sometimes that means I got to nudge you and sometimes you're going to nudge me. And a lot of that's going to be based upon the strengths. Right. Ian has has a great vision. He puts that out there and then Ed starts executing. He's got to push Ian forward and, and you're able to get the you're able to advance the business if, if you both have a mindset of 
pushing each other forward in, in the interest of, of, of growing the business. Um, so now, since Ed's joined the team, can, can you talk a little bit um, about what that's done to help you grow your business, Ian? Yeah, so I would think um, <clears throat> from an organizational standpoint, it's been really good. Um, my goal when I joined the W was to start building out a team um, and having, you know, Ed is really like one of the first big cornerstones of like starting to build out a team. Um, so having him to like lean on as part of like growing my future business, that's been really good. Um, the fact that like, I don't have to worry as much about the details of day-to-day -day transactional things that I have the ability to like go out and get business, go to networking events, even though I can't go via Zoom. Uh, but, you know, make those phone calls that I dread making that I'm not very good at. Um, but I'm getting better at thanks to Ed because he reminds me all the time to make them. Um, you know, those, those things um, I've been able to do more of, which has given me more opportunities to get listings, to get buyer leads, to, you know, to help my clients and serve my clients better. So it's kind yeah. of, it's the time. It's really a time, a lot of time. Yeah, he's helped save you a lot of time. And, and, and I love the, the, the kind of pushing you to do the lead gen that you don't really want to do, you know, you know, a, a lot of times you're not alone. That might not be people's favorite part of the day. You know, some people will say eat the frog first thing in the morning, but when you have, you know, when Ed has permission to push you there, which he does and he does do it and, and, and you've started making calls and it's probably even, it, it probably gets easier and easier, you know, as you're, as you're making it a part of your habit and he's helping make sure that the habit doesn't get broken. Um, again, different walks of life. Like I've, I've got a, a workout, a workout buddy, right? I can't let him down. So I got to show up. I got to show up to the gym to, to work out because then if I don't, I'm not only letting myself down, I'm letting him down. So we've been talking about all these great things and I haven't, I haven't asked you guys about this yet, but I'm curious what you're going to say. Things aren't always perfect, you know, and, and so part of our goal here is to talk about if there were any difficulties or growing pains, we can call them through these six months that you've been working together. Were there any growing pains and how did you guys navigate it and come out on the other side? Ed, you got anything? <laughs> I'll lean on you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's all a working process. I mean, there's always going to be growing pains, I think. You know, there are things I'm sure I've done that have frustrated Ian, but he's been too diplomatic and too kind to like, yeah, scream at me. But uh, no, it's, I think it's, it's, a, there's always going to be growing pains and, uh, you know, but. I think a lot of it for me was like being a solo agent. I mean, I have, I had other people on my team prior to Ed uh, on the buyer and seller side, you know, as agents. Um, I think for me, the biggest thing like chemistry wise or like difficulty has been like, when to ask Ed things and, and when not to, and like figuring that out for me, like, cause I was always so used to doing everything on my own. And the more that I've leaned into like Ed helping me, the better it's been. Um, so that's been, I guess that's kind of like a learning curve for, for me, not necessarily like anything that he did or we did that there was an issue with. Um, it's more like kind of learning how to, how to actually like depend on someone else to, to get things done. That's a, that's a great point. And, and that's something that some people take too easier than, than others. You know, people, you know, you're, I've, I've had a chance to work with a lot of, a, a lot of successful agents and successful business people. And, and, and some of them are more organized than others. You know, you, you are definitely on the, on the side of people that were more organized to begin with, you know, and, and sometimes those people that are already fairly organized and, and somewhat process oriented, they know that they know their process and they're almost afraid to let go of that. So I think that's a great point that you make in terms of the just letting go, you know, but bringing Ed in that, you know, at, at the end of the day, you've been able to fall back on the fact that, okay, he's here <laughs> so that I can let go so that I can, so that I can go produce more. So I, I kind of have to do this. I kind of have to make myself let go, even if that's a little uncomfortable. Gotcha. For sure. All right. Well, I, I always like to give give you all a chance to give uh, one piece of advice. You can give more if you want. Um, again, we're here to to help rainmakers, 
hire the right person and, and build a, a good relationship um, once they get their person in the door. And same thing for job seekers or new hires, things they can do to win a job or to impress once they get on, get, once they get on board. We've talked about, we talked about a lot of that already, but um, guys, any, any last kind of pieces of advice that you'd like to share with rainmakers, job seekers, new hires? Uh, I'll go. I, sure. I'll go first. Um, I think the biggest thing that impressed me with with Ed, and I guess this is advice for job seekers, was that like Ed actually had all of his um, like referrals knew that we would be calling and had them so prepped, not in a bad way, but like they were like, oh yes, of course, and like they were all so um, aware. Where like I know that like even when I like interview places, I would always like just put someone I know and like know that they would do a good job for me and never like gave them a heads up. It was very impressive. That like level of extra effort and detail, which made me very comfortable hiring him because I knew he would do that in my business. Is that, is that like the correlation between the two? Yeah, I love that. We, we talked about that and, and it probably seems like, well, of course I did that to Ed, right? You know, but we do, you know, on the hiring side, we don't see that happen all the time. It's, it's actually more common that, that we'll try to follow up with people for references and we might get a call back, we might not. You know, the people, sometimes we get references where the people didn't even know that we were gonna be calling. Um, in, in this case, Ed, to your point, Ian, Ed teed it up. He, he told them, we, he clearly told them we were gonna be calling, they were prepped. You know, they had great stuff to say about him, actual stuff too. It wasn't all just Ed's the best guy in the world. Like they, they were prepped with specific examples that were going to be relevant to why he would be successful in this job, you know, and his references were some of the best prepared references that, that I, that I had ever gotten, you know, for some of the jobs that I had hired. So Ed hats off to you. And, and again, to job seekers, you know, it's, it's a little bit of extra effort, but it can make a big difference. You know, um, that those references, you know, really, really sealed it for Ed. And uh, Ian, any, anything, anything additional? Um, I think, yeah, you know, like, I mean, I, we kind of said some of it before, but like be open-minded, really like go through the process of like being diligent about, and I'm probably over diligent because I'm kind of a little bit of a detailed person. Uh, but, um, you know, take your time and don't rush and like really get to know the person. Like I learned so much about Ed through the interview process that we like lived in the same neighborhood in New York and he knew people that I knew. And, um, and that didn't happen until I think interview two or three, right. Where we like, we're really like getting interview. to know each other. Yeah. So like, I think take the time, um, and, and really listen to what, the experience of the person is one thing and then the actual person is another and making sure there's a match. And one thing I wanna drop in here and I hope I'm not stealing <laughs> stealing from Ed here, but, but, but I don't wanna forget it. So you, Ian, have been, played a very active role in getting, in getting Ed trained and getting him the information. So like on, a, on our weekly sessions, you were there every single week and it's not that mm -hmm. you have to be there, but you, you know, your commitment to, to be there, you know, side by side with him, really invest your time to make sure that he had everything he needed. He knew everything. He, he knew all about your vision. He knew exactly what he needed to execute. You were there to answer questions. You were, you know, partnering with him in his growth, you know, to, to become the operations master of the team. You know, that, that was a, a real hats off to you, Ian, and, and for other Rainmakers out there, you know, I've, I've said this before in other interviews, very, very important to pour into your, into your talent. You know, it's, it's an upfront investment. I know that you just hired someone and on some level you might feel like, oh, well, I've, I just paid this, I'm paying this money now. So, so that should fill this gap and I should immediately be freed up. It doesn't really work like that always, you know, and, and sometimes it's, it's necessary for you to, maybe not necessary and more smart for you to pour in that additional effort in the beginning to really set your person up um, to succeed. <clears throat> yeah. I, mean, I, enjoy, I enjoyed, I enjoyed being there and like seeing all of the, the rationale for doing things instead of like having Ed do it, coming to me, reporting to me, 
figuring it out, editing it, and then doing it, I felt like it would ultimately be more efficient for him and for me if I was on those calls where I could say like, oh, I do this this way instead of that way. Um, and like listening to you, Ryan, tell me that and why you guys do things certain ways or why you recommend doing things certain ways uh, versus the way that I do them. It was good to hear it from you and hear Ed and like kind of be collaborative mm -hmm. and just like then have the homework to do afterwards of like cleaning up, you know, cleaning up the processes, um, you know, I don't know. I thought all, overall it was more efficient and then I thought it was good for all of us. I don't know what Ed, Ed probably was sick of seeing my face every day. But. <laughs> it was like this was supposed to be my one hour a week away from me, and now I'm just trying. <laughs> go, go ahead, Ed. Anything? Oh no, yeah, I think that like collaborative uh, effort of you know the rainmaker being you know Ian in, in, in this case part of those weekly meetings and not missing is so valuable, and you know I would encourage any of the rainmakers to do this as well. Uh, with you guys and I think the you know structure you guys uh, provided and you know I, I think that was also very valuable uh, to us as well as we learn the different you know processes and best practices. Awesome <clears throat> well guys thank you so much for taking time out of a Friday to join us here help uh, help other other people similarly situated you know to succeed in bringing on talented people and um and, and, and building a successful business with them. Um, again, everyone, uh, Ian Perler, Ed Lanigan with KW Philly. If, if you're looking for uh, buying, selling, investing, you know anyone in the Philly area, I want you to strongly consider them. They're doing great things there. Um, you'll have a, a great agent and, and, and an amazing support staff um, there to help you through your transactions. So thanks again so much, guys. Um, you have a great weekend. Yeah, thanks for uh, inviting us. It was a great chat. Thanks. Thank you. Okay.